my last video, part one of this, I made a video detailing, not detailing, but like overview of the process. Just took me through the whole course of making electronics, doing all the things to make this gun. And then all of this junk right here. So I'm just going to give an overview of what is actually going on. So first here, having we have powering the whole thing is an 11.1 .1 volt lipo battery but if you already have a gun with the connector for the battery you're going to use 11.1 .1 volts by the way you could take the connector from the gun and then lead it onto your lines so you can charge your whole gun and power the valve with the battery you have here i made just a case it's a simple thing from a mag pouch to hold the battery I didn't know that HPA used foster fittings at first, so I'm just using normal air hose fittings for a compressor that you would find in a garage. And I'm using brake line tubing that runs to the valve. This is a 12 volt solenoid valve, and when you charge this up all the way, this will perfectly power your valve. And here it runs to a quick disconnect so I can, if I need to, take off the stock and then runs into the gun. I'll show you that in a minute. If we take off the back of the stock, inside you'll see the Arduino. And here for easy programming, so you can just take off the stock and program it right there. I will now take off out the electronics so you can see what all is happening. Okay, so this is electronics. I salvaged some connector, quick connectors from a different, just a thing that I found. And then here's the MOSFET, which controls the whole thing. Here's the old relay that I don't use anymore. It's just still on the board because it's too hard to get off. And this all sits on a daughter board on top of an Arduino Uno. If you had an Arduino Nano with the code that I'm using, this can run the same code that a Nano can, so it'll be way smaller. And in future builds, I'll probably do that. So this runs off a MOSFET using the simple code boom back and this all goes nicely into here okay so I took off this t top attachment just so I can get to these screws easier and now And there we see the beautiful 3D printed engine. You'll see more once I open it up, but essentially that is the engine right there. Anyways, continue on, let's grab. Let's get this side. This is really low. Let's get that room. Put it inside. Make sure. Okay, so make sure if you're off, you can drop it up. Make sure you keep this thing safe because you need it. Okay, so let's move this guy. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Let's grab it. Let's get out the package this year. Let's get out the cap. Move the handle. Yeah, 
Put that in a safe place. We'll now push on this, push on that. Booyah. We have the HPA engine. I took out the original plunger and the original just everything in this, saved the cylinder, and then, booyah, I took my 3D printed parts. I'll now show you what they look like on the inside. Ooh la la. Okay, so the front part I had to modify because it was oversized for the inside of this. So I just took a Dremel to it, got it to where it fit perfectly, and boom. That was that. So this is a cut down version of the AEG string from this AEG. So this sits here and controls the t and pushes this back once it's opened. So how this works, right? So you have the mag feeding up into here. So the BB sits here. And when you hit the trigger, it releases air into this tube, which forces around this inside area through these holes. And this is the only way out, so it goes up. The nozzle goes forward. And the second it hits there, and it has pushed the BB forward, so the other BBs are sitting about here, so it only shoots one, that's when the air releases from here into there, firing the BB. Boom, 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 boom. And that's how the firing mechanism works. Okay, so this is really very simple. What I did was I printed the engine, all the printed parts. I did 100% infill, and then I just Teflon taped, sanded them a bit just to get them all good and all fitting in here. Here's this better circuit diagram. Last time I just had one that I drew in a notebook, and I'll have a better digitally made one popping up on the screen probably about now. The code will also be in the description and then you can mount any of these parts however you want. All of the parts that I used, if you just want to do this without making the tank, which I'm going to show you in a minute, you just need the pump, the tubing, which comes with all the fittings for the tubing. I'll leave all the links to all of this stuff down below. If you just want to drop this into a gun, and you already have the tank and the hose, the normal HPA stuff, and instead of the quarter inch fitting like I'm using, which is weird, I'll include links for foster fittings, all of the stuff you need to use normal airsoft HPA stuff with this gun. Everything should be about sub $75, but if I'm wrong, I'll correct it right here, right here, and then here will be the actual price of all the items that you need for this project. Okay, now I will show you guys about how the regulator for the tanks I'm going to use works. I would recommend if you had doing this, do not use this. Use an actual HBA tank. They're really cheap, used. Anyways, so this regulator, input pressure, output pressure. I can regulate it anywhere between 0 and 200 PSI. My gun shoots amazingly at around 120. So this is more than enough, more than I need. This is the tank. This is the top of the tank. This is a small version of the big one, but it has the same top. So this is how it works. Is this fitting, as you see here, interlocks with this. So this is a quick disconnect. So I can use one regulator for all of my tanks. So say I run out of air in one tank during a game. I have probably three more that I just can fill. So this just runs to a normal normal compressor tube. Most HPA uses eighth inch instead of quarter inch like this is. And then this connects to basically the gun with one of these. It's really easy and simple. This just sits on my back. These small ones actually can fit perfectly just in a day bag that I have. And if I run into the big ones, like I have on my backpack, I can just use the small ones. So this is the regulator that runs to the gun. This is the big boy. I'm going to grab my camera for this. I designed and made a full leather case for the top that goes around and up. It actually goes around the bottom of it. And so this is just, actually it's just ratchet strapped to a backpack with this head straps that go in my waist, so it weighs nothing. 
And this regulator can perfectly fit onto this one because this is the same thing as this one has, just smaller and bigger. So overall, I'm really happy with this and all of the code, here it is, open source, edit it. If you guys try this for yourself with my code, I want to see videos of it. Please, please find a way to just send it to my email. I'll put my email in the description. Send them to me. I want to see your guys' stuff. I want to see if you guys do anything with this, pick any inspiration. This has been a really fun project. And it's better than the AEG. Thank you for watching. See you next time.